Hello. The salon business can be tough. I don't think that's a sign of the times. I think that's just a state of the industry statement. Um, so I think it's very important that we make the most of every opportunity to increase turnover and profitability wherever we can. And that's where I get frustrated because I see lots of examples of salons leaving money on the table. So today I want to talk you through a very simple technique to boost your turnover and get perhaps a little bit more profit out of your salon business. Welcome. You would never know it, looking out the window at the moment, but it's the beginning of summer here in the south of England, if you can ignore the grey skies and the clouds and the drizzle. And that means, of course, that I've spent the morning trying to figure out how on earth I'm going to entertain my children across the summer break. That means shopping for flights for our summer vacation, and the airline pricing model is always inspiring to me when it comes to the profitability of salons. And I've talked lots and lots of times about the necessity to get tiered pricing into our salons. But today I want to talk to you about something slightly different. I want to talk to you about putting a premium version of your products and services out there. Because I still remain to be convinced otherwise, I believe that 20% of your customers will be willing and happy to buy a premium version of a salon service or product if they felt it was good value for money and if it was offered to them at the right time. But I don't see salons doing this nearly enough. It was sharpened in my mind when I went to see one of my um, private coaching clients. She has a salon down on the south coast of England and just before she'd signed me up as a coach she had increased her prices for the first time in I think it was three or four years. And she got some resistance and this happens if you haven't increased your prices for a long time and then you increase them you can expect to get some flack from some customers. It's much better if they get into a routine where they expect a price review every six or every 12 months. Anyway, that resistance that she'd met meant that she was very unwilling to relook at her prices after we'd carried out her initial financial analysis, because at the end of the financial analysis we realised there were some very unprofitable services on her price card. So what could we do? Well, one of the things we could do was to offer a premium version of some of those services. She was already doing this for nails. She had a luxury manicure pedicure package in place, but this was a hair and beauty salon. There were lots of opportunities to offer premium versions. So we went through everything, through the hair side, through the beauty side and tanning as well, and came up with as many premium versions as we possibly could. And I think you could be doing this too. But how would it affect our turnover? What could it possibly do for our business? Well, jump into my computer. I'm going to take you through a few slides to show you how we can impact profitability without actually going out and finding any new customers at all. So let's imagine in Phil's imaginary salon that we have a thousand customers, each spending £500 a year, let's say on hair services, giving us a nice healthy turnover in my salon of 500000 either pounds or euros or dollars, whatever it is that you're working in. If my assertion is correct, 20% of those customers will be willing to pay a premium for a deluxe version of that service. So 200 of those customers might be persuaded to spend, say, £700 across the year. That takes our turnover from 500,000 all the way up to 540,000 pounds a year. But this is where I think salons slip up. I think this is where we leave money on the table. And that's because I think if 20% of your customers are willing to pay for a premium version, 20% of those customers might well be persuaded to spend even more on a super deluxe version. Think about that airline model of pricing again. We have people on the same plane, some in economy, some in premium economy, some in business class, some in first class, all heading for the same destination, all having a different experience of that journey. So jump back into the computer and let's take this to that four level pricing approach. If 20% of our customers were willing to spend 700 across a year, maybe 40 of those might be persuaded to increase their spend to 900 a year. Perhaps we could give them access to certain products that we only use with our premium customers. Maybe we could put a premium on certain slots during the week. Maybe our evening and weekend appointments are going to be priced slightly higher. 
And then let's do one more round. Bear in mind that pricing model on, our, on the airlines, you think about how much more a first class passenger is spending than somebody in economy, it's way more than double. But for here, I'm just going to ask you to double the spend of just eight customers a year. That gives us 800 spending £500 a year, 160 spending 700 36 of those spending 900 and just 8 customers a year we're going to persuade to spend twice as much, spend £1,000 on their hair services. That gives us an increase from 500,000 turnover all the way up to over 10% increase, £552,400. And bear in mind, we've achieved that increase without going out and finding any new customers, just by getting creative with how we offer our services. And it is a creative exercise. It's something that we can get our team involved in as well. Just throw the price out there. I've done this before. I went into my salon about five years ago and said, I want to charge £100 for a haircut. And at the time, our most expensive haircut was, I think, £65. I said to the uh, I said to my partner, I want us to charge £100. He said, well, we can't. This is insane. I said, but how do we make that feel like good value for money? Because once you've hit on that, you've got something that you can market. And we did it. We had a £100 haircut, which also included a load of blow dries for you to spend across December. We launched it in November, sold just 10 of them at £1,000 before we'd even opened the door on the 1st of December. So sometimes the price can come first, but use your team, tap into their creativity. Now, I'm not pretending that 10% increase is pure profit. Of course it isn't. I appreciate if we're buying premium versions of products, that's going to have a cost attached to it. Perhaps if we're extending appointment times by giving a deluxe version of a service, that's got a cost attached to it. But I refuse to believe that there isn't some mileage in offering premium services. I hope that's been useful to you and I hope that's given you permission to be brave with your pricing. Bear in mind, just because we put something out there doesn't necessarily mean it's going to cost us anything. If nobody buys that premium version, we haven't lost a thing. And actually, maybe it's anchoring you as a slightly more expensive salon for next time you do your full pricing review. If that's been useful to you, don't forget to hit subscribe. I do a broadcast like this every single week, and I would hate you to miss out on the content that I'm sharing. If you've already subscribed, I will speak to you again soon. Take care.